where would we have gone without Jesus? If God had not decided to become man so that we can receive eternal redemption, where would we be? Is God in our midst? Is God with us? And is God within our hearts? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We worship you, Father. Receive all the adoration. We acknowledge your Lordship over our lives. We declare with our lips that without you there is no other God. Be thou exalted. Be thou magnified. Be thou glorified. In Jesus' much less name we have worship. In Jesus' much less name we have worship. Glory to God. I didn't tell you to sit down. <laughs> Praise God. You're already sitting down. <laughs> now you can know why I sit down at times when the service is on. Because I know I'm going to be standing here at times two hours, at times more than two and a half. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Glory to God. Why don't you celebrate the beautiful ones around you? Thank God for their lives. Welcome them to the Easter service. With them happy resurrection. With them happy resurrection for everyone. Happy resurrection to all of you. Happy resurrection. Happy resurrection. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. Look around you. Look around you. You know, everyone you are seeing around you is a family. It's your family. Can I hear a loud amen? amen? That is why the body of Christ is powerful. Because at times when you come to church like this, you see yourself as a, as a person. You see yourself as an individual. But that's not the way it is in the realm of the spirit. God sees us as one. One body, one member of the same family. The family of God. So you see why you cannot be defeated. Can I hear loud amen? That's why it's not easy for you to be defeated as a member of the body. Somebody can be interceding, interceding for you without even knowing you. So you are not alone. When God says you are not alone, understand it. You are not alone. Amen? Your family is powerful. Your family is wealthy. Can I hear loud amen? Your family is influential. Your family has power. Glory to God. So you can never be stranded. You have a, pow a powerful family. That's the church. That's what the church is all about. So when, when you come to church, don't just see, oh, no, no one knows me, uh, I'm just a, 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 a person. No, 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 no. God knows you individually. He knows you personally. He knows you to the minutest detail to the point that he knows the number five of your hair. 
Glory to God. We are a mystery to the world. Amen? The church is not periphery to the world. In other words, an insignificant part of the world. No. Don't mind what is going on. That's not how it is spiritually. And you have to understand that. We are not periphery to the world. In other words, we are, not, we are not just on the sideline. After you have dealt with more important things, then you can now come to church. No, the world is periphery to us. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I'm telling you the real truth and scriptural truth. Did you know, did you hear God say that the reason why he has refused to allow evil to be unleashed on the world is because we are here. That's what the Bible says in, in 1 Thessalonians chapter 2 or, or so. That the reason why people are talking about evil, they've not seen evil until we leave. When we are raptured in the twinkling of an eye, hallelujah, is a glorious experience. We are the real McCoy in the world, the church. Very important. And it's time we started to flex our muscles. Amen? You must not allow yourself to be intimidated, to be fearful in the world. No! We have what it takes. Somebody shout hallelujah. Shout the greatest hallelujah. Put your hands together once again and celebrate Jesus. Amen. You may be seated. Evangel voices, you've done it again. Give them a good God bless you. For, for leading us in that beautiful time of worship. Hallelujah. Dominion restored. Romans chapter 4 from verse 25 and you drop down to chapter 5. Romans chapter 4 from verse 25. Who was delivered for our offenses and was raised again for our justification. You can notice those two words, our. He was delivered. Go back to chapter, um, chapter 4, 25. Who was delivered for our, not for his own. Not because of he did anything wrong. No sin was found in him. He knew no sin. He did no sin. It was for our, our reason he was delivered. For us he suffered. Because like we were sharing on Friday, God has to be satisfied. God had to judiciously ensure that we are redeemed without the devil pointing accusing finger on him and saying you are unjust. So he was delivered. God delivered him for our offenses and was raised. For what reason? For our justification. Chapter 5 verse 1. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God. Somebody shout, I, I'm, I'm at peace with God. No, you don't say it like you mean it. One more time, shout it loud. There is no more, uh, you know, I don't know whether God is happy with me or not. No, that's a God, that's, 
He's happy with you always. I say he's happy with you always. We have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. It happened because of what Jesus did. Verse 2, by whom also, by this Jesus, we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. Glory to God, I'm so excited. Our, our, let, me, let me show you one or two things. Uh, go into Romans chapter 3 from verse 19. Romans chapter 3 from verse 19. And give it to me in, uh, in the Passion Translation. Romans chapter 3 from verse 19. Now we realize that everything the law says is addressed to those who are under its authority. Everything the law, L-A-W, says, it is for those who are under the authority of the law. This is for two reasons. Why so? So that every excuse will be silenced with no boasting of innocence and so that the entire world may be held accountable to God's standard. God is saying you must meet my standard. If you don't meet my standard, no salvation for you. You will still go to hell. <laughs> Verse 20. For by the merit of observing the law, no one earns the status of being declared righteous before God. For it is the law that fully exposes and unmarks the reality of sin. The law exposes sin. It reveals the sin in our lives. It is the law that says that we are adulterers, that we are fornicators, that we are thieves, that we are, we, we are fearful. It's the law that reveals those things. But now, but now, but now, independently of the law, the righteousness, he said the law condemned us, the law made demands on us. But because of Christ, the righteousness of God is tangible and brought to light through Jesus, the anointed one. This is the righteousness that the scriptures prophesied would come. It is God's righteousness made visible through the faithfulness of Jesus. And now, all who believe in him receive that gift. It's not end, it's not, it's not merited. <laughs> You didn't work for it. On end or merited. What's the last one? On. On end or merited on. Undeserved. Never deserved. It's a gift. For there's really no difference between us. Next verse. For we all, both Jews and Gentiles, have sinned. And are in the need of the glory of God. Yet through the powerful declaration of acquittal, God freely gives away his righteousness. Somebody put your hand on your chest. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. I am righteous. Say it again. Say it again. His gift of love is a gift of love and favor and now it cascades over us all because of Jesus the anointed one has liberated us from the guilt from punishment and from the power of sin why wouldn't I why wouldn't I love him Jesus God given destiny was to be sacrificed to take away our sin. And now he is our mercy seat. 
because of his death on the cross we come to him for mercy for god has made a provision for us to be forgiven by faith in the sacred blood of jesus this is the perfect demonstration of god's justice now that, that, that's where I, I, i'm trying to show you these things happen to demonstrate the, the god's justice all these things happened he died he was delivered because we we were sinful he was not and so this is a perfect demonstration of god's justice because until now he had been so patient holding back his justice out of his tolerance for us so he covered over the sins of those who lived prior to jesus sacrifice he was patient waiting for this time so all those who died before jesus he was covering their sins with the sacrifice of animals but now with his own blood once and for all everything about blood everything about sin have been eradicated hallelujah when this, this season of tolerance came to an end there was only one possible way listen to this only one possible way for god to give away his righteousness only one way not because not to not to be end not to be deserved is not to be merited only one way for him to give you righteousness and still be true because you are a sinner we were all i told you on friday that we all became sinner by one man adam all you need to be sinner is to be born once you are born you are a sinner you have the seed of sin inside you just like you have the dna of your parents inside you when you are born so when you were born you have the seed of sin and so th there is only one way by which you can receive the gift of righteousness it's only one way and god cannot just slam it on you simply because you you are you 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 are you are working hard there's only one way so that he can be a just god there was only one way, possible way for god to give away his righteousness and still be true to both his justice and his mercy towards us to offer up his own son that one way is the only way is to offer his son so now because we stand on the faithfulness of jesus who knew no sin who did no sin who no sin was found in him the bible says that he you know what the bible say in in the, in the sermon on the mount he said except your righteousness except that of the pharisee you cannot see the kingdom of god and he says he did not come to destroy the law he didn't come to destroy it and say the law is no more good he came to fulfill it so until every judge of the law is fulfilled there can be no salvation for us and so the only person who did fulfill it that's why we put our faith in him who fulfilled it and therefore released us from all the guilt and condemnation and accusation is jesus because of him god has declared everyone who believes in him just before him can i hear loud amen, amen. somebody shout i believe in jesus Shout it again. Shout it again. Verse 26. And when they say, put it back, verse 26. Okay, I think I've, I've said that. Verse 27. He said, if Jesus did it, where then is there room for boasting? Why should you boast? Why should you flaunt any credential before God? 
do our works bring God's acceptance? Not at all. It was not our works of keeping the law, but our faith in the finished work that makes us right with God. It's our faith, faith in Christ. That makes us right with God. So our conclusion is this. God's wonderful declaration that we are righteous in his eyes can only come when we put our faith in Christ and not in keeping the law. Your father can be a bishop. Your mother can be a bishopress. Whatever way. Listen, it can still not end you. Right standing with God. Only Jesus. Somebody shout Jesus. Shout it again. Shout it again. Jesus. Glory to God. I say glory to God. The death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, if it only be becomes a historical fact to you, then your, your faith is in vain. If it's just a, if it ends up in history that there was a time Jesus came to die and he died for your sins and rose again and so this is Easter day he arose he arose and all that and we celebrate if, if it is just a historical fact and not a spiritual reality to you that something really took place to ensure that you are put on the pedestal of victory permanent victory on, in every area of your life until you understand that that's why he did it he didn't need money in heaven he didn't commit sin but he became sin that we might become the righteousness of God that we might be like God he died he became poor so that you can no longer be stranded in life he took on all the pains, his back lacerated, body broken, so that we can receive divine wholeness. The greatest honor you can do for this great sacrifice that we are celebrating in this season is to experience and enjoy all the good things he released to us. It will be an insult and an abuse to redemption if you are not experiencing the reason why he died. It must be a reality in your life. In other words, if the enemy has attacked you with sickness, you will not tolerate it. You have to stand in the brutality of your righteousness and say to the devil, you cannot stop me. I reject sickness in my body. I reject this growth. I reject this cancer. I reject the diabetes. You cannot stop me. It has been carried by Jesus on the cross of Calvary. By his stripes, I am healed. Somebody shout hallelujah. Proof positive. That you have the victory. As good as it is. Is not in the fact that he died. It is on what happened on Sunday. On resurrection. If he did not rise from the dead. You cannot claim you are justified. What he did on the cross was for your sins. But your redemption. The proof that you will live eternally with him is in the fact that he rose. That is the gospel. That is the gospel. In fact, that's the summary of what we are talking. First Corinthians 15. First Corinthians 15. Verse 6. Okay, let me, 
Let me take you from verse 1. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preach unto you, which also you have received and wherein you stand. It is this gospel, on this gospel we are standing. By which also you are saved. That's how you got saved. If you keep in memory what I preach unto you, unless you have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you, first of all, all that which I also received. How that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. And that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. And that he was seen of Cephas, that's Peter, then of the twelve. After that he was seen of above 500 brethren at once, of whom the greater part remained unto this present time, but some are fallen asleep, some are dead. After that he was seen of James, then of all the apostles. And last of all, he was seen of me, Paul writing, also as one born out of Jesus' time. For I am the least of the apostles, that I am not meet to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and this grace which was bestowed upon me was not in vain, but I labored more abundantly than they all, yet not I, but the grace of God which was with me. Therefore, whether it were I or they, so we preach, and so you believed. Now, if Christ, listen closely, if Christ be preached that he rose from the dead, how say some among you that there is no resurrection of the dead? But if there be no resurrection of the dead, then Christ is not risen. And if Christ be not risen, then is our preaching in vain. And your faith is also in vain. Yeah, and we have found false witnesses of God because we have testified of God that he raised up Christ, whom he raised not up. If so be that the dead rise not. If the dead does not rise, then it's a lie. Christ never rose. For if the dead rise not, then is not Christ raised. And if Christ be not raised, your faith is vain. You are yet in your sins. Then they also which are dead or asleep in Christ are also perished. If in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are of all men most miserable. But now, hallelujah, Christ, now is Christ risen. I thought I would hear a great hallelujah. Christ has risen. I said Christ has risen. I said Christ has risen. It's not a historical reality. It's a spiritual fact. It's a spiritual truth. Which you can build your faith on. Now is Christ risen from the dead. And has become the first fruits of them that slept. For since by man came death. By man came also resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam, all of us died, so in Christ shall all be made alive. Let me hear a louder amen. amen. A believing amen. amen. Christ arose. is a spiritual reality. And because he arose, there is hope for me. I said there is hope for me. You know that on the, when he was buried, the religious rulers... And all those who judged him made sure that they sealed the grave so that they would not rise. It was sealed. Not only sealed, soldiers were put there to ensure that it did not res resurrect. Because they said it, even they came to, the, to Pilate and said, it, we had this man say that on the third day he will resurrect. Let us seal the place. And it was sealed. And heaven was watching. And the Bible says that on that third day, Mary, the mother of Jesus, Mary Magdalene and the rest of them were going to the place to anoint the body of Jesus. 
Why seek ye the living among the dead? They were worried who will roll away the stone. Who is going to roll away the stone for us? For us? Who will move those stones because the stone is too big? But by the time they got there, the stone had been moved out. I don't know what you are wondering how it will happen in your life. By the anointing in this service, I declare that today it is removed in your life. It is removed in your life. It is removed in your life. Who will roll away the stone? As hell could not stop Jesus. Oh, you know, that's what Paul was telling us. The God unleashed the greatest power he has ever had in order to ensure resurrection. Because the devil also decided, he said, he said, he said this time around, I am going to corner him. Now that he's dead, I will ensure that he never rose. Because if he did not rise, you cannot claim salvation. So you must understand the importance of his rising. The devil covered, cornered, and, and, and ensured that everything he had, he unleashed it. But he forgot that he was dealing with God. He wasn't dealing with man. In the beginning, God. God existed before anything. So there is no way the devil can corner God or back him to the wall. And Paul captured it in the book of Ephesians chapter 1. From verse 15. Put it on the screen. I want you to give it to me in TPT translation. Passion translation. Because of this, Paul is writing. Since I first heard about your strong faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. And your tender love toward all his devoted ones. My heart is always full and overflowing with thanks to God for you as I constantly remember you in my prayers. I pray. He now begins to pray for us. He said, this is the prayer we need. Understanding. I pray that the Father of glory, the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, will impart to you the riches of the spirit of wisdom and spirit of revelation to know him through your deepening intimacy with him. Next verse. I pray that the light of God will illuminate the eyes of your imagination, flooding you with light until you experience the full revelation of the hope of his calling. That is the wealth, God's glorious inheritance that he finds in us. His holy ones. There is an inheritance he has in us. The holy ones. I pray that you will continually experience immeasurable greatness of God's power made available to you through faith. Then your lives will be an advertisement of this immense power as it walks through you. This is the mighty power. He said, our lives will become advertisement. When the world sees us, they will see God. Let me hear loud, amen. amen. He said, this power, that was, what, when was it released? That was released when God raised Christ from the dead and exalted him to the place of the highest honor and supreme authority in the heavenly realm. And now he is exalted at the first above every ruler, every authority, government, realm of power in existence. He is gloriously enthroned over every name that is ever praised, not only in this age, but in the age that is coming. And he alone is the leader and source of everything needed in the church. 
He is the source of everything you need. God has put everything beneath the authority of Jesus Christ and has given him the highest rank above all others. Watch this. What, see where you're coming. And now we, his church, are his holy, his body on this earth. And that which fills him, who is being filled by it, we are now, this, this one that has the highest authority and highest power, he said, we are now the people that demonstrate through our lives this power that he's talking about. You carry power, but you don't know it. You are dangerously loaded but you don't know it. Every witch bows before you now. I said they bow before you now. He said that all power that were released When a believer begins to run from witches, then you don't know who you are. The choir just sang to us, I know who I am. I know who I am. When you begin to run from witches and wizards, when you begin to run from incantation and spells, now witch, now witch, listen, when you understand, listen, darkness is just, is nothing other than absence of light. When light appears, darkness has to flee. There is nothing you are suffering from that has not been fully paid for. And not that, not only that it was fully faithful so that you can have it. Jesus rose, the, re the reason he rose is that so that he can become the emperor, the monarch, and the presiding one over what he has, what he died to ensure that you get it. Hebrew chapter 9 from verse 15. Hebrew 9 from verse 15. For this cause, he is the mediator of the New Testament. By means of death, for the redemption of transgression that were under the first testament, they which are called might receive the promise of eternal inheritance. For where a testament is, there must also of necessity be the death of a testator. In other words, whatever there is a will, the person who rose the will must have to die so that the will can become, become, become effectual. For a testament is of force after men are dead. Otherwise, it is of no strength at all. While the testator liveth, you cannot begin to execute a will when the person who wrote this is still alive. Now, whereupon neither the first testament was dedicated without blood. For when Moses had spoken every precept to all the people, according to the law, he took the blood of calves and of goats with water and scarlet, and scarlet wool and hyssop and sprinkled both the book and all the people, saying, this is the blood of testament which God enjoined unto you. Moreover, he sprinkled with blood both the tabernacle and all vessels of ministry. And almost all things are by law purged with blood. And without shedding of blood is no remission. Glory to God. Now, watch 23. It was therefore necessary that the patterns of things in the heavens should be purified with these, but the heavenly things themselves with better sacrifices than these. For Christ is not entered into the holy place made with hands which are the figures of the truth, but into heaven itself, now to appear in the presence of God for us. He appeared for us in the presence of God. 
Not with the blood of bulls or goats or animals, no. And he doesn't go every year. He entered in once and for all. Once and for all. Once and for all. Nor yet that he should offer himself often as the high priest entered into the holy place every year with blood of others. For then must he often have suffered since the foundation of the world. But now once in the end of the world had he appeared to put away sin by himself, sacrifice of himself. Give me that tonight, Hebrew 9, 27 and the rest in TPT. Every human being is appointed to die once and then to face God's judgment. But when we die, but when we die, I want you to read the rest, but when we die, it's, listen, go back to 20, 27 so that you can get the import of what you are reading. Is every human being, not just Christians, every human being that is that when we die, is that we are appointed to die only once. Then after that, we are going to face judgment. Then he says, But we who are already Christians, but when we die, because you know, when he says every human being, he just put in generally speaking. But so we are not in that every. Our own is that, but when we, who are now having our faith in Christ, when we, we will, when we die, we will be what? The one who experienced death once for all to bear the sins of many, and now to those who eagerly await him, he will appear a second time, not to deal with sin or to judge you, but to bring us to the fullness of salvation. So you are not dying with trep tre trepidation. You are not dying with fear. Where am I going? No. He said when you die, angels will welcome you. You see, there are two receptions. There is a reception of death where when you die, demons will welcome you because they are the people you served when you were alive. And there is another reception where angels will welcome you because when you were alive, you, are, you served Jesus. Your faith was in Jesus. I don't know what type of reception you want. Because that's the only sense of this season. You see, Tony, we will meet face to face. When I see him, I fall on my knees. When I see him, I face him forever. And when I see Jesus face to face, oh. On my knees, I fall on my knees when I see him. I praise him forever. I praise him forever in the heavenly, in the heavenly place. When I see Jesus, when I see Jesus, I
translation Romans chapter 8 okay let's back up a bit from back it up to verse 29 that's my last scripture for this morning for he knew all about us I'm trying to show you that look you don't have any reason to to be intimidated or to be a fearful from making a demand on the price that was paid for you Everything he did, even his resurrection, is to ensure that you get everything. How can you allow, leave everything to chance? For he knew all about us before we were born. And he destined us from the beginning to share the likeness of his son. This means... The son is the oldest among vast family of brothers and sisters who will become just like him. We have become joint heirs with him, brothers to, to him. Having determined our destiny ahead of time, can you see why you can't fail? There are things that God has already pre-planned before you were born. He called us to himself. When he has prepared it ahead of time, he now called us, that's how you, why you got saved, to himself. And transferred his perfect righteousness, which we have now received as a gift because of Christ, to everyone he called. And those who possess his perfect righteousness, he called, glorified with his son. Next verse. So, what does all this mean? If God has determined to stand with us tell me who then could ever stand against us for god has proved his love evidence of his love is christ that died for us god has proved his love by giving up us his greatest treasure greatest the gift of his son and since god freely offered him up as a sacrifice for us all he certainly won't withhold from us anything he cannot withhold from us anything anything else he has to give it will be unrighteousness with him to have it with him and say he won't give it to you the question is, do you believe it belongs to you? Who then would dare to accuse those whom God has chosen in love to be his? Not even sickness. God himself is the judge who has issued the final verdict over them. And the verdict is not guilty. Somebody shout hallelujah. Who then is left to condemn us? Certainly not Jesus, the anointed one, for he gave his life for us. And even more than that, he has conquered death and is now risen, exalted, enthroned by God at his right hand. So how could he possibly condemn us since he's the continually praying for our triumph? Who could ever separate us from the endless love of God's anointed one? Absolutely no one. For nothing in the universe has the power to diminish his love toward us. Troubles, pressures, problems are unable to come between us and heaven's love. What about persecutions, deprivations, 
dangers and death threats. No, for they are all impotent to hinder omnipotent law. Even though it is written all day long, we face death. Threats for, for your sake. We face death threats for God's sake every day. We are considered to be nothing more than sheep to be slaughtered. Yet, even in the midst of all these things, we triumph over them all. For God has made us to be more than conquerors. And his demonstrated love is our glorious victory over everything. So now, 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 everyone say now. now. Say it again. Now. Say it again. Now. Say it again. Now. I live with confidence that there is nothing in the universe with the power to separate us from God's love. I am convinced that his love will triumph over death. It will triumph over life's troubles, fallen angels, or dark rulers in heavens. There is nothing in our present or future circumstance that can weaken his love. There is no power above us or beneath us, no power that could ever be found in the universe that can distance us from God's persistent, passionate love, which is lavished upon us through our Lord Jesus, the Anointed One. I want to hear the loudest hallelujah. The loudest hallelujah. I recently discovered that one of the most powerful prayer anyone can offer when you are faced with adversity Jesus loves me this I know <laughs> it's a powerful prayer when nothing loves me when everyone forsakes me when I'm being rejected, abused, maligned, condemned, criticized, disparaged, Jesus loves me. This I know. He loves me. He loves me. And because he does, he fights. He fights for who he loves. He fights for who he loves. You know, you know, you know, the more they fight you and don't want to see you, the more the Lord will be showcasing you. The reason is that they don't understand. We are doing all this thing to this person and yet he's going about as if nothing happened. They will lick the dust. I cause every sickness, I cause every disease, I cause every symptom, every complication, no matter what it is, it may have defined doctors. They must have called it a name. But I stand in the name that is above every name. And command that thing right now. Die! 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 No mountain will stand before you. I said, no mountain will stop, stand before you. I've told you, before the month of June, can they both say, whatever is still hanging over your life that is a prophecy, 
I command, let there be a manifestation. Let there be a manifestation. Let there be a manifestation. In your business, in your health, in your finance, in your academic life, in your marital life, in the area of the foot of the womb. Whatever that need is, whatever that challenge is, today, I command it by the authority of heaven. Bow! 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 He came and removed your shame. He removed your shame. He came and removed your rejection. He came and took away your betrayer. You know, at times, people betray you. There was a Judah that betrayed him. And it happened so that you yourself, betrayal will not terminate your destiny. Can I hear a loud amen? I said, betrayal will not terminate your destiny. Everything he suffered was for us. It was for us. And we can't suffer it. All we need to do is to stand. When you stand your ground, haven't done all to stand, do what? Stand. Who will give up the devil? Huh? They will speak for you in high places. I said they will speak for you in high places. You will not labor for trouble. I say you will not labor for trouble. You will not labor for another to take from you. And I pray for you. No power of darkness will cut short your life. No power of darkness will cut short your life. No accident, no plane crash, no ritual killers, no kidnappers. Yes, no accident, no plane crash, no ritual killers, no kidnappers, no sickness, no disease, no charm, no enchantment, no divination. Whatever they are projecting towards you to terminate your life, by the authority of heaven, I silence them. 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 No more struggles. Your struggle is over. I say your struggle is over. Your days of toiling are over. I say they are over. I say they are over. I said 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 they are over. Yes, I declare over your life that creation will celebrate you. Nations of the world will celebrate you. They will look for you. What you carry will attract them to you. What you carry will attract them to you. What you carry will attract them to you. Nations will look for you. Creation will look for you. In the name of Jesus. Put your two hands on your head. I speak into your life. Today, by the authority of heaven, Christ died that we might be honored, celebrated, and elevated. He died that all shame will be removed. And so I command every reproach following your life over time. One step forward, two step backwards. Delays and postponements, interception of what belongs to you. By the authority of heaven, 
I command them to be removed. I command them to be removed. I command them to be removed. I declare no more shame in your life. I command honor in your life. I command celebration in your life. I command glory 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 in your life. Thank you, Father. And I speak that in the new Nigeria that is imagined, I declare over your life, you will not be lost in the crowd. You will not be lost in the crowd. You will not be lost in the crowd. You will occupy your own space. You will occupy your global space. I command divine highlighting in your life. I command divine marking 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 in your life. Heaven marks you today. Heaven marks you today. Heaven marks you today. Heaven marks you today. Thank you, Father. Blessed be your name. We give you the praise. We give you the honor. In Jesus' name. Amen. Shout the loudest, Amen. Amen. Shout the loudest, Hallelujah. Shout the loudest, I have the victory. Amen. Put those hands together for the Lord. Amen. Glory to God. Let us reverence and honor God with our tithes and our offerings. Has this God been good to us? Has this God been merciful to us? Has this God showed us that indeed that we don't need to do anything for him to show us love because he is love the psalmist says in psalm 116 verse 12 what shall i render unto the lord for all his benefits towards me verse 13 listen to his statement i will take the cup of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows unto the Lord, now in the presence of all his people. Next. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. Next. O Lord, truly I am thy servant, I am thy servant, and the son of thy handmaid. Thou hast loosed my bonds. You know, you know, he said, I will take the cup of salvation. In other words, when I begin to look at this cup, I find, the more I look at it, the more I find the need to really say, Lord, I thank you. Because there are things that accompany salvation. Your salvation does not just end up in going to heaven. Your daily protection is part of salvation. Your daily provision. Your ability to breathe, to be alive. To walk through the streets and drive ride in our trains and not be caught in between kidnappers and ritual killers and terrorists. You're being on a highway and not being caught in, in a fatal accident. You're going to the hospital and doctors being able to diagnose what's wrong. It's part of your salvation. He said, I will look, when I, when I begin to look at this cup, I see, I see find that, look, what shall I render? What, what actually can I offer this God? 
to tell him that I love him. On Friday, I was sharing with you here that you must, in our offerings and in our tithes, we must not profane this offering. It's, it's offering before God. It's not money. It's an offering. Don't see it as money. It's offering. It's something sacrificed to God and in a reverence to him. The reason God dealt with the children of Eli was because they profaned the offering. Not because they ate it. The offering belonged to them. But they disrespected it and were going to take it when it was not time for them to take it. That's why it is a dangerous thing for any person who says he's a pastor to steal God's money. That's profanity. And God deals with it. If any, if no pastor can prosper who, who, who takes offering. After all, we are, we are servants of God, you know. <laughs> we... we we, we eat where we labor. And so, so you go to put your hand. There are appropriate ways to deal with money, things that you offer to God. Appropriate ways. You don't just touch it anyhow and say it doesn't matter. In the Hebrew language, it's a quale. There is no quale. So don't do a quality with God. Yoruba will say, she be, she be, she be, she be, she be offering me. She be. It's an insult. That's not profane. I, I'm telling you, some, sometimes we do these things without knowing. Even when you are using your electronics to transfer, even when you are writing your check. Let that be an element of reverence that you are giving it to Jehovah who owns everything. It should be there. Reverence. And I told you that if you, if you, are, if you are giving your offering or your tithe out of fear or by force or by intimidation, it's no man offering. It should be out of love. When God gave to you, he gave it out of love. For God so loved the world that what? He gave. Let's take our tithes and offerings. Father, I don't know how we can express our joy to you that you gave to us. After all, if you needed anything, you would not ask from any man. You own everything. The earth is lost and the fullness thereof. The cattle on the thousand, he is the beast of the forest, the fowls of the air. And so we bring our tithes, we bring our offering. We ask, Father, your blessing upon our giving. In the name that is above every name, the name of Jesus, Father, I thank you for rebuking the devourer for our sakes. Thank you for causing the nations of the world to call us blessed. Thank you for good measure, pressed down, shaking together, running over. Men give to our bosom. Thank you because we are blessed, going out, blessed, coming in, blessed in our basket and storehouse. Blessed in, our, in the fruit of our body, the increase of our kind. Thank you because you have opened to us your good treasure, the heaven to give us rain in season. You have made us plenteous in goods. We are above all, not beneath the head, nor the tail. We are lenders, we are not borrowers. Our milk barrel will never run dry. Father, we will not be ashamed or disgraced. When we call upon you in the day of trouble, you will answer. Thank you, Father. Thank you because there is meat in your house. There is meat in our houses. In Jesus' name, amen.